You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for American Horror Story. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest American Horror Story news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues. It's After Buzz TV for American Horror Story. Get your story. smile ready. I know, curtain right up. <laughs> Hello, every, everybody, and welcome to After Buzz TV for American Horror Story, Season 1, Episode 7, Open House, aired last night, Wednesday, November 16th. Oh, oh. come in. Who's at the door? <laughs> <laughs> it's that creepy doorbell that they have at the murder house. It is. As always, I'm your host, Billy Nellis, joined by the lovely David Scifaletti. What not, up? Not that lovely. And Rude. You always, you always preface his name with like a nice I adjective. Do. I don't know why. <laughs> because I'm amazing. He's my favorite. That's <laughs> debatable. He's with me week to week, so he, yes. gets, he gets the adjective. He's earned it. Okay, fine. What am I at? Mediocre? <laughs> Slowly working my way up the ladder? Uh, <laughs> darling Deidre Bahar. Thank you. Alliteration, too. Well. Extra yes. bonus points. All right, so we're about halfway through the season, and I am going to be blunt and say that I think Open House was a bit of a filler. Yes. Episode. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Not as scary this week. Um, Very um, interesting. Like, we learned was, a lot of stuff right. in this episode, but it just was, it was like more information than yes. anything. There was a lot of information given. There really weren't very many scares. Um, no. Mm, were there any? It was more just a... More cre- I mean, it was just that creepy feeling that you yeah. right. show. But and no, like, like on the edge of your seat moments. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So, as we said, we learned a lot. We learned more about Larry's backstory and how tangled it is with Constance, um, something that we didn't know up until now. I'm kind of shocked about the whole like love story between him yeah. and Constance and like what actually happened within the fire. Because when he first told his story to Ben mm-hmm. and we like learned about it, it seemed so real mm-hmm. yes and i was a little wait, were you guys shocked i had no idea that larry and constance had any sort of shock i did not either i was not ready for didn't expect that either and she's such a badass she <laughs> doesn't care about him no. Could care i less. love that he's like i love you i know and constance is like oh shut up and i just I know. bleed for her i know and we also this week learned more about what's growing inside of vivian um, they were delivered a shock, I guess, in knowing the fact that it's not just one demon baby. <laughs> it's two demon babies. That's coming. Whether that's accurate or not, I think is to be seen because who knows what's really going on in this womb of hers. Right. Um, and what these doctors are seeing. There was a little bit weird stuff the way the doctor was being played, which I'll get into when we get to it, sort of, that I read into it. Yeah, sketchy um, doctor. Yeah, there was some weird things about that. Um, I didn't see anything weird with the doctor. Well, that was the first thing I wanted, so we'll just jump into it, because okay. that was the, the first topic I wanted to speak about. Yeah. So this week, we do see the Vivian and Ben um, are, they've, they've got their results from the amniocentesis back, and it has revealed that... Wait, by the way, nice job throwing know, out right? amniocentesis. <laughs> Big word. Yeah, Alert. nice job there. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he said last week, he called me out on it too last week for knowing. Oh my God. <laughs> are, do you have... Um, Past experience working with amniocentesis? Well, I don't, but I took um, anatomy in high school, and I just Anatomy remember. in high school? I took honors human anatomy. Oh, Wait, honors. did you dissect cadavers? No. Because we Westlake had that class. No, we, my dissected, um, we dissected cats. Close um, enough, right? <laughs> my, and oh, this is totally American Horror Story. My cat had babies inside of it. I had mm. to like pull out. When it was dead? Yeah. It, it died with bait with kittens in it, and I had to pull kittens out of the tummy. We need to get Ryan like, Murphy on the line. I was like Dr. Montgomery. <laughs> I and then you sewed them all together and made a giant kitty. No, I, I put them, <laughs> we, we put them in jars. And creepily enough, I have a picture. I'll have to find it and bring it in. I have a picture. You don't like, have it stored in your attic. <laughs> no, we don't get to keep the kittens. The teacher like wouldn't let us take them home. But I have one. Me and my me and my lab partner April. We named the kittens that we like. You named out. your dead kitty yes. fetuses. Yeah, because oh, so they, 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 so they stayed with us all year. 
Um, imagine how stinky that cat was that we kept cutting into because they kept it in like a freezer. This is such a long story. That's totally needless. But... You just proved yourself as the host of American <laughs> Store Story. That is so gross. I'm sorry. Uh, long story short, that's how I know what an amniocentesis is. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the backstory. Continue. So, they learn through the amniocentesis that they are having twins, that Vivian is going to be delivering not one but two. But I hope they're conjoined. <laughs> Something. Don't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Some tangled mess growing yeah. up in that mm -hmm. womb. But what I was talking about a couple minutes ago when I said that there was some sketchiness going with the doctor, when Vivian went back and was sort of demanding more testing, it was oh, very right? weird to me how the doctor did not want to, to test anymore. Right. She well, can't it be a little harmful for a woman in her mature age, having a child, especially twins, um, to be doing all this testing, couldn't it, it be harmful to the the fetus eye? My, my, the fetus <laughs> eye. My problem with it was the doctor's approach. You know, if a doctor is going to advise you not to do something, they just need to come from like a clear objective. Like, okay, you're not going to do that. Here's why you're not going to do it. X, Y, and Z health reason is going to Right, but none of that was brought she up. She seemed like she was coming from an emotional place. She seemed like she was trying to hide something. Yes. Like there was something oh. else that was revealed in that test that she didn't want to have to talk about. Right. She didn't want to divulge the results or whatever. Right. So yeah, I got the same creepy vibe from I the doctor. I got it definitely, mm. it definitely like that there was just something unanswered, something hidden that was revealed and she didn't want to have to reveal it. Right. I and agree so with that. She was trying to avoid further testing to get that out of the way. Right. I guess I'm just used to creepy doctors. <laughs> well, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to the doctors do being weird. Do you need weirdos. a recommendation of some I might. sort? Okay. I, might. I mean, I, might. I do. I do feel bad for you about that. <laughs> I also, <laughs> I want to talk about the scene with Vivian um, and her her alone time. Oh, <laughs> very, very NC seventeen. Um, and her well. <laughs> What? It was. <laughs> it was. Her, her fantasizing and where the fantasy sort of went we don't as, know. as it progressed. But it well, got... what song did she play? She played a song before she decided to take her sexy nap time in it, her black lingerie. It was like smooth R&B, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. It was either smooth R&B or like smooth jazz. Smooth it wasn't, jazz. It wasn't like Lady Gaga. By cool, maybe 6.7. No, she, yeah. she wasn't getting off to the gog. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was interesting how usually don't people just pick one person to fantasize about? She fantasized about like four people. Right, and it and it progressed. I mean, I expected it to be the security guard, and then I expected it to sort of go into Ben. But then as her her what what she was doing got further in and more involved and more intense, it turned into rubber suit. The rubber man. <laughs> well, how weird would it be if? Her dreams are sort of showing her who, like, the father of her children. Like, let's say maybe she has two separate pregnancies. Like, maybe one's the rubber man's, one is Ben's. Oh, ick. <gasps> There's two separate fetus growing at the yeah. same time. Is that they a could, possibility? It is actually a possibility. You can have two kids growing inside of you from with two different, different fathers. Yes, it is a possibility. Would you have to have had inter... Look it up right did, now. Yeah, did you learn Would this you... in your period class? No. Your period class. Oh my god. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. Would you have possible. had to I see I didn't learn about this in my honors human anatomy, so <laughs> maybe you know more than I would you have had to have had intercourse really close together? I mean no, I No, not imagine... necessarily. So you could do it months apart? Not not <laughs> you can <laughs> actually do it months apart and they would have separate due dates, but you can <sighs> actually be in, have two separate embryos that get fertilized. I'm sorry. Wow. Then why don't more pregnant women have twins, or have? Well, they what wouldn't are you be twins. <laughs> what? It wouldn't be a twin though. It's separate embryo. Whatever. I, she I have two babies it's at one time. It's twins. But are they even twins because they wouldn't share DNA if they're the, from the two same different father. fathers? They would be half brothers. Right. <laughs> so it would be like separate. <laughs> That's so much stress right <laughs> my head around. Sorry that we're throwing all this out. Well, well that's today. a really interesting know. theory because. What movie? Well, I think I was watching Juno, where someone was like, "What's the worst that could happen? I'm already pregnant." Um, apparently, worse can happen. You can get pregnant again <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, how? I mean, I I was always under the impression that those parts, that part, shut off as the baby was growing and over developing. It. Yeah, <laughs> Jesse, can you look that up? He is. Thank right. you. So basically, how, how, yeah, I want to know this the is odds. a one in a million, literally Thank a one you. in one a million, million chance. Okay, but 
Uh, according to doctors, if a woman has more than one sexual partner while she's ovulating, there's a minuscule chance that different sperm cells can fertilize two separate eggs. Seeing that the sperm t cells take a while to travel, and to the eggs take a while to travel there, uh, they can overlap. Oh, yikes. I told you. So you could have... But could, this is like a freak case. It though. is a freak it, case, it really but you would have to be... This is such a freak case, though. <laughs> exactly. It would have to happen while you were ovulating, clearly, by right. what we found out. So she would have to have had sex very close together within days. Well, and right. she did. Ben, she had right. sex with Ben and Rubberman on the same day. Right. Exactly. So, so it this stands is, to reason oh, that there could theory. have been two separate... Fathers. Spermies. If, women. If, and one's a demon baby. And one was a mongoloid. What's a mongoloid? <laughs> Constance calls Constance Abby. Calls Abby. Oh, a mongoloid. A mongoloid. If we're but, right about that and that you mean, happens, I, mean, if I'm I will right, have an aneurysm. Yes, if David if is right. I am right. <laughs> I'm, if David is right, you I'm going to me set up like confetti cannons. <laughs> and we'll and when it's explode. revealed, like this <laughs> entire place is going to explode and rain confetti <laughs> on David because that will be so amazing. That's the ultimate prediction. Right. 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 <laughs> yes. Definitely. Okay. All right. Love Ingenious. it. Well, moving on from so from <laughs> this this Vivian and Ben story, I want to talk a little bit about Violet and Tate because through Violet and Tate we saw um, some, poor Violet. She's losing her right. Losing herself. Violet is really kind of losing her mind. Mm -hmm. I, feeling like she's losing. Yeah, her yeah mind. she does feel like she's losing her mind. She but thinks I feel she's like going insane. But she's something's happening. Figuring to her. it out. Well, because she likes living in the house yes. and she is falling in love and with think, Tate right. even though she knows now that he's dead which yeah. is why she had that whole conversation with her mother about how she knew when she was in love with her father and and how she could tell and when Tate explained to her that all you have to do is say go away or stop he said he made a comment and I can't remember it I wish I would have written it down but he said something like now you can see them you can see ghosts because you're blank I wrote it down he said he said, uh, let me see if I can find it. It was like, you're progressing or you're transitioning. They are appearing to you because you, you've evolved. Evolved. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So that means that there's some sort of a process that she is now a part of. Yes. Involuntarily, obviously. She's al alive. She's a 15-year-old girl. She's not dead. Right. Well, Constance um, can see everyone Constance as well. Constance is a part of this as well. Right. And, and, and Addie was also. And what's mm -hmm. interesting is we go back a couple of weeks ago with that conversation between Constance and Violet about how Tate like sees the same thing in all of them. They all have the same sort of strength. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's interesting that they all also are able to now see all of these. I think it has to do with the fact that she now knows that Tate is dead and she's accepted the fact that she can see a dead person. Now so they're now, to all of they're them. revealing themselves to her. If that makes sense. Can we talk about Bo? Yeah. Well, we, I was going to wait a sec for when we got into Constance, but go ahead. No, Bo is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen <laughs> oh in my, my God, whole life. Oh my God, have you ever seen that movie? From the, yeah. With Cher. with Cher? It looks exactly Eric like him. I was like, oh, Eric Stoltz is in the... the yeah, that's the, exactly what I thought no. as well. No, is this an 80s film? Yeah. yeah, it's an 80s movie about this mom who gives birth to sort of a... Basically the same thing. Like, he looks like that. Um, he's just sort of this normal guy, and he's raised... She raises him, and it's all about how he sort of... As is a teenager with that face. <laughs> so, Bo... Is Bo the love child between Jessica Lange, Constance... And Larry? And Larry? I don't know. I don't because, think so. I don't think so, because Constance didn't meet and I guess we'll just transition into talking about Larry and yeah, Constance. Sorry. Well. No, that's fine. There was very little to talk about Violet and Tate anyway, so I yeah. just wanted to get what we already said out of the way. Um, she is depressed though. Right. She she's gonna, I think, combust at some point. I don't know if she's depressed. I think she's I just, think she's just she's confused. Uncomfortable and confused about what's going on. But I do think that there's a part of her that she did love the house, but I don't think she knew why. And I think now she sort of is understanding why she had this connection. Well, from the get go, she was the one that was like, "We'll take it. We'll take it." Yeah, she knew that. And she thought it was awesome there. that someone was killed there. Yeah. Like I think she secretly gets off I mean, on that whole dark. A very aspect. strange child. <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah. Much like. What's her face? Jessica Lange. No. Constance. Addie. No, Winona Ryder and Beetlejuice. Oh. <laughs> She was the same way. Yeah. When they looked at that house, she d had the same reaction after she found out that the previous owners had died. She was like, awesome. Yeah, yeah let's do this. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into Larry and Constance since we got there. So this week we saw a flashback to 1994 when mm -hmm. Larry was living in the but house. Again, wasn't, didn't Tate and Constance live in the house in well, 1994? Whether Constance did or not. 
wasn't clear, but Tate definitely did. Tate was there, but we don't know that Constance was. We don't know who Tate's father is, correct? I imagine it's the the man who she killed. I imagine he's the father of all Oh, of right. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who, who cheated, who with, Moira. cheated with Moira. Yeah. Got it. But it stands to reason that what happened with Tate could have happened after what we saw this week. And we did see that Larry and Constance were having this affair, and she wanted to come back into the house after she had lived there. And Larry throws his wife out, tells her to leave with the kids mm -hmm. so Constance could come back. So it stands to reason that what happened with Tate happened after Larry kicked his wife out so, it was, so Constance and her family could come back into the house, okay. thereby ensuring that when they died, they could die on property and become ghosts. Right. Okay. But do you think that what happened in the beginning of the episode with Bo happened, with before. Bo happened before or after what happened with his wife? That I don't because know I would, why I, he would be there. Exactly. What I think is that it would have happened would have had to have happened before because she didn't ever take him out of the and he didn't have burn marks on his face so who is he um constance went up to visit him and like was embracing him as though it was her child my sweet handsome Beau is, boy Bo is, is her kid it is her, her kid. number three of four children that have been revealed yeah okay Beau she said she has four kid. kids yes abby tate, tate now Bo. Beau. we Ooh. still have him at the fourth oh my god i can't wait I know. Do you think it's somebody living in the house also? It would have to be. Yeah. Do you think that's the demon baby that was in the basement that attacked no, the coat no. girl? No, no, no. Okay. Because that, that we know now is Nora and Charles Montgomery's Frankenstein oh, baby. Oh, Thaddeus. Got yes. it. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, Thaddeus. <laughs> Such a regal name for such a terrifying creature. I There's love a, it. But isn't there, from like a screenwriter standpoint aren't there always reasons behind why they names? pick certain names yes there's Usually. always yes. names i mean tate is there to reference the LaBlanca tate murders i mean they're oh, the sneaky. sharon tate what's what's violet i don't know because that you have to look into into the meanings of names and things like that right yeah. when but you're usually, trying to figure stuff like that i mean yeah. usually they will they'll try to sort of put a name i mean some some of them just i mean when it's when it's a show that's this heavily mythologized, I think names mean things. When it's yes. like something like Friends, the names don't mean anything. <laughs> of course. Names. Right. But of when course. it's shows like this and shows like Lost, I do think the names mean mean something to the character and right. they, they represent that person. Well, that's why I'm so peculiar. Uh, I'm Peculiar, I, yes, you are peculiar. <laughs> are you perplexed? I'm so perplexed and I think Violet <laughs> is peculiar because it's like a pretty bright colored flower and she's and not she's as so dark. dark. Yeah, she should be a thorn. <laughs> Then her name should thorn. be Rose. <laughs> not e no, not even. That's a just happy thorn. Flower. Just th yes, <laughs> Thorn Harmon. Yeah, or Fern or something like that. <laughs> Continue. All right, but so we did see that also the story that Larry had fed Ben in the beginning about he the, the house made him light his family on fire. Now we know is not true. Right. Um, and in fact, his family died because the wife was so distraught over being thrown out for Constance, let them on fire, killed them, killed her kids and, and killed herself. Well, it also seems like what the house never affected Larry himself. It, it seemed to have that? like affected his wife in the way that she, in her behavior and their relationship, but it didn't seem to have affected Larry at all. He seemed completely normal. Oh. Unlike Ben, who is like, <laughs> coming undone at the seams. I don't know that that Larry, I mean not that he's normal, but right, you know, right that he in comparison. A, sure. I do, but I think that also I mean, I think that we I hope that we'll see more to see that it had affected him because as of now this week just totally undid everything we thought about him. So I think right. we have more to learn. And I have a feeling, I mean, there's no way that anyone enters this house unscathed. Right. So I think that either, well, if, if it hadn't affected him yet, it will have, we'll see it have had some point down the road once Constance moved in. Right. Because right. you don't just walk in that house and leave normal. Yeah. Well, he did, and he was in the, Ben revealed that he was in a burn unit for two years and then was in a mental ward. Right. Yeah. So something happened. Something definitely happened. Something serious happened. Right. And I do have some... I believe it. I have it in here. I have some scoop from Ryan Murphy about Larry. Yay. Oh. So we'll get to that when we get to news and gossip. Um, but so this week we also, I want to talk about Moira a little. We saw that they finally have, they have this buyer for the house. Who was 
Um, Ugh. Who's creepy. <laughs> Stereotypical <laughs> creepy sleazy douchebag guy. Yeah. And he comes in and he wants to buy the house and what? Moira. He nothing. was. He was. He was he like was. a full stereotype. He was Armenian and he lived in Beverly Hills. Yeah. I, I'm not going to judge his ethnicity by any No, I'm not judging measure. I'm no, not judging his say, ethnicity just, either, but I'm just saying that like they stereotyped they played upon something, everything yes. about yeah. that that one line where women have three purposes in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was disgusting. Yeah. Okay, continue. Well, it, I mean it was there so that we wouldn't have cared what happened to him whatsoever. Exactly. We right. weren't supposed we, to like we needed the character. To, we needed to sort of wish that what happened happened. Yes. Um but so he comes in and he, and he is doesn't really seem to be phased by what has happened, you know. Vivian is very blunt that she she's going to be straightforward, and not just their legal obligation to admit what's happened in the past three years, but to admit it all. Um, he can see young Moira. Right. Young Moira presents herself to him as young Moira because she sees an opportunity for herself mm -hmm. to be dug up. She wants that gazebo down. She right. wants the Swimming pool, pool because once her bones are found, she can take them and leave and never be in this wretched house again. Right. So Moira thinks she has found her salvation, found her escape. her escape. And we come to find out that he has no plans to actually live in this house, but rather just tear it, tear it all down as it's revealed to Constance. And Constance is sent into a tailspin because as we've seen, her kids Constance, are gonna die. Right, Constance has used this house as a way of everlasting life right. for her family. She has latched on the opportunity of the evilness that exists to make to ensure that her children are never away from her. Constance is alive, though. Constance, Constance is, is alive. living. What I... She's going to die eventually. She doesn't look like a spring chicken, okay? <laughs> no, Constance she... is not in her prime, but and she will die. But what's interesting to me is that we've never met her husband, except for in a flashback, and he died on the premises. Right. Oh, he... yeah, like, where is he hiding out? He, did. he died and on I, the premises, and where is he? I did, we never spoke about it in the show, but I did, in researching stuff, I did see that there is some talk that they do want to bring Eric close, the actor who played him back. So we will see him again. Okay. As as we've been, they've, they've said out okay. there in, in some statements. Because in the it, it would be completely incongruent to just have him never come back. Right. He's but, obviously in the house somewhere. Right. And, and for the them rules. to have used such a, um, a sort of a, a TV name actor, I mean, he hasn't, a, he's not just some a random that right. they could have used for that scene. They used somebody who is sort of a recognizable, name, yes, right, to the point where you'd want that character to come back. Mm -hmm. they, they should have more than one scene. So I do think that we will see Eric Close come back and, and see more about um, his life with Constance, although that would be very hard because I was reading that that scene to make Constance look that young cost them $150,000 to do yeah. the FX work. I didn't even think she looked much younger. <laughs> no, she looked amazing. Like Wait, then I need to go back and rewatch it. You do. Um, it cost them a lot of money to do that. Was it digital effects or was it makeup effects? It was like the people who Both. did Benjamin Button. Oh it was God. done digitally. Oh my God, I wonder if Jessica Lange was like, can I stay like this forever? <laughs> <laughs> But so he is supposed to be coming back. But so we, we find out that he's going to tear it down. Constance is freaking out because yeah. it, it's just... He tears it down, her kids know, die. Well, she doesn't know what will happen. Well, it's, it's you know, it's, it stands to believe that even if he tears it down, tear they'll it be down, there, that but they'll, they'll still be, something be there. Else that she won't have the ability to control. If it's, right. if it's apartments, there's so many variables for her to get her hands in that she can't. Now it's only one family. She can always have this contact. Right. But if there's like, you know, 75 Multiple apartments tenants. built on top of it, how, what is she going to do? Who knows what will happen? Right. right. And it could Scary reveal thought. it to more people. And she doesn't want that many people knowing that this hap is, exists. Right. So she reveals that to Moira. And she and Moira are finally on the same team for the first time, I think, ever, ever since they've known each other, living or dead. Um, they have the same goal that this house cannot be torn down. A lot of fellatio in this episode. Yeah, so Moira much. did what she had to do to get what she wanted. Yeah, both times. So uh, n n you know, in typical Constance fashion, took the um, took the plunge. The most I don't even know. Like she, she killed him. Yeah, that did not need to happen. There are probably other ways around it. Well, did you notice also that chase. when they when Larry was suffocating him, uh -huh. old Moira appeared. Right, He's she's not when young we, Moira Larry to Larry. Was... No, oh, no, yeah. no, but the Eskandarian, the guy who was the prospective being buyer murdered, being huh? murdered, he saw old Moira, because you saw it through the plastic bag. Oh, well, oh, I didn't even notice that. I didn't mm -hmm. either. She switched to old Moira. Well, I guess Moira. she didn't need to be young anymore. No. 
I want to know the rules dying. for transitioning between old and new. I think she we we How come had only, discussed it. Only at, men can see her. We we she reveals it to who she wants. To. Exactly, but also we we talked to about this a while back and. But you're in the same room. Right. She's in the same room with multiple people. Vivian and the realtor didn't see young Moira. Only the Escandarian or whatever. His name right, was. because we we discussed this a while back, and I think Alexander Breckenridge and and. Uh, What's her name? Francis Conroy. Francis Conroy talked about how young Moira appears to only to men. That she wants something from? No, because right. she's like a... Or she uses that's her how sexuality. men see her. Yeah. And women see... It's her revenge. They said yeah. it was sort of her revenge because she, the way she died was because some man took advantage of her. And so her at, while she's stuck here, this is her revenge on men because she blames men for what happened to her. Got it. Okay. Sort of thing. So that's why they're revealed as that. Weird. But what's also interesting and was funny that Constance wanted the body off the property before he finally died because she didn't want to, have to deal with him ever again. Right. She didn't <laughs> want him living forever. Right. So she had Larry just get rid of him. That's so funny. Um, yeah, you got to keep the number of of, of uh, prospects and, down. Yeah. yeah, but I also there, it was just like such a weird and funny thing. And that first scene when when young Moira performs the fellatio, yes, and then we see the old Moira walking out and she's like wiping her mouth. I know, it was so <laughs> creepy. I'm at, like, I totally love when they flash, me like the, like in the first episode when when Violet sees the old Moira yes. on top of Ben. I just love those like weird moments when. It's just so you realize how creepy <laughs> the situation is. As, as an actress, really like, do you think Frances Conroy thought at this age she would still be doing scenes like that? No, but I bet you she loves it. I bet you she does too. I bet you she digs it. Yeah. It's I think probably it's probably an actor's dream. To do it. Yes. Still be like not just a grandma or something. Right. She's playing something completely opposite. Right. Amazing. Like in theory, she's a sex object. Right? Yeah. In theory, she's a hot. How old is, is what's her name supposed to be? Alexander Brackenridge. Isn't she 20? I would imagine like mid 20s. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, that's really fun. But it is so weird. And we, we've talked about this before. Um, you know, young Moira died in the 80s. And there's such a wide gap between mm -hmm. young Moira and old Moira in age that I, I don't understand how. The time frame? The time, or not even the time frame. Or I mean, how, like, she's how she's aged so much. that much. Why she right. appears that old. Unless that's also something she uses to get her way because it's easier for her to appear as sort of the spinsterly old woman to get people to want to employ her. As More sympathy. Woman. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, because there's no way that someone would have aged that. There's Well, if between, you were 25 in what year? 1985? It was 85 or 86. Okay, so if you were 25 and 85, 50, no. 35 and 95, 45 in 2005, you'd be 50. Yeah. Frances Conroy looks older than that. She, and she is. I can, no, no knock on Frances Conroy, but, but she that's, is. She is. Yeah. And so they it, play that up. Yeah. They don't try to make her look like a spring chicken. But right. It's, <laughs> okay. Definitely. All right. I want to talk about what we learned about Dr. Montgomery and Nora that we learned through the murder, um, the murder house tour that was finally completed. Um, we saw exactly what Dr. Montgomery did. I mean, we, we knew. We knew, but I didn't know that he was able to actually bring the baby back to, to life. life. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, he did. He was able to reanimate. He was I would have a loved Frankenstein. He's a very to, elegant doctor. He is. He's capable of these things. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen, though, how he, how he did it. managed to do that. I mean, he sort of explained that he put a beating heart in. But that still doesn't make that any doesn't sense. Make, I mean, obviously, no, it makes no sense. A heart would not beat yeah, if Yeah, realistically, it was cut. that's and not going to happen. And it's a, an adult heart. Not right. a baby heart. Right. right, when it wouldn't even fit. But there were so many different parts. Obviously, it wasn't just the baby's parts anymore. Right. Because the baby was big already. And so... Please Nora call him Thaddeus. Thaddeus. <laughs> Thaddeus. <laughs> Thank you. Already. So Nora is... I couldn't tell if she was immediately repulsed or in her sort of haze, she was sort of overjoyed, but kind of... I thought she was, like, weird disgusted reaction. by it and, like, horrified, but then... Apparently she tried to feed it. She tried it. to nurse it. It was like I, I. I was so confused, and then like I guess the baby like bit her boob off. <laughs> it did something. It's I don't. Yeah, and it then did she tried to kill it with a. Well, it wanted to feed blood because right. she said that it seemed like it. Di it didn't want my milk. It wanted something else. Mm -hmm. It wanted blood. So there seems to be this. It's a Frankenstein monster, but is there like a vampirism within it, or or is it just this animal hunger for? 
I mean, who who the hell knows? I mean, we've seen the we saw a still of this baby thanks to a and to our fan Scott who emailed us. Yes, this week. thank you so Which, much. Which, by the way, I didn't see; it wouldn't show up in my email. It is the most frightening thing I've ever it's seen really in my terrible. entire life. Let me try life. to pull it up. It, it wouldn't work on my phone, but I saw it on my computer. It okay, yeah, has I to see it on my phone. Pointy teeth. It was creepy. I I don't know how he that Scott. If you're watching or listening, I told him to call in. That call in. that still that you caught was amazing. It literally scared me <laughs> shitless. Wait. It's so creepy. It is like the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my but entire so life. So this thing is creep. This yeah, and it has like pointy, creepy. sharp teeth, so it's very possible that it, there's like some sort of weird vampire aspect to right. it. And so after this experience, Nora goes down and she pretends that she's happy with what Charles has done and hugs him. <laughs> and as she hugs him, she kills him and then kills herself because right. she just can't handle what has happened in this house. Now, what I'm curious about is if that baby died. Well, it didn't. It's still in the basement. But is it alive? No, it was lower than that. It's under here. Oh, whoa! <laughs> it's hold on, we need to show this to the camera. So wait, who is this supposed to be? That's the Th that's Thaddeus. Here, I'm gonna bring it up. up. Well, can you guys get it on the uh, pad? For a big. Oh, picture? where is it? The pad is on the couch. Oh, it's no, because it's on my email. Sorry. Is this good? Back it up a little bit. You just gotta keep it still so So it can focus. There we go. Oh my goodness. That is Thaddeus. Alien demon baby. <laughs> and wait, and shout out to Scott. It was Scott. Scott who sent it in. Thank you for, yeah, thank for you sharing for that, that with us. Incredible like finger work with your remote to catch that. Uh, yeah, that, that, like that the takes master skill. From Buffy like, the Vampire. <laughs> what did you say? It looks like the master from Buffy. It does, right? So So scary. It, I don't know if if it died or if it is still an actual living like thing living that has thing continued in to the age basement? and grow in the basement. Do you think that's possible? It's gonna manifest sense? itself in Vivian's womb. Oh my god! What if that was? Oh my man? god! <laughs> what? That's what that I want. That is frightening. Maybe <laughs> that's why the you stole my pen. I know I like to doodle. All right. Um, <laughs> um, maybe that's what the ultrasound technician saw, and that's why she got frightened yeah, because she saw Thaddeus. I would be frightened for my life. Right? That would be that would be scary. If that was trying to claw its way and through my body. I know she was dreaming in that scene where she was putting lotion on her stomach and then you saw the little the hand print. print. Uh-huh. Those are Thaddeus's hands. No, they're not. <laughs> yes, they are. Stop it. I'm so scared. Watch me be right. We need to start a tally. You're wrong, I'm right. No. I'm, You've been I, wrong about everything on Pretty Little Liars. But I've been right about everything on this show. He has what, so, been. so you called that Tate was Jessica Lange's kid? On the first episode. Okay, so you get one point for he that. Was, and something else. You were, I don't remember. I don't All right, let's jump to commercial existence. really quickly, and we will be right back. Yeah! Oh, F not a commercial. TV. Hi, I was once like you. A lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And, like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag co-workers about it at the water cooler. Then, I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzz TV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows, from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Oh, what an amazing new, new commercial. commercial. All right, so we're going to really quickly jump into our special segment. We've been doing this every week where we bring to you a recommendation for a film. <coughs> we're calling it our American Horror Story Film Night. Yeah! Um, to continue your the themes that you've seen this week. Now, this week And was if you not, have nothing better to do with right, your life. Right, if you're like us and you're at home on weekends and just want to watch more TV and movies. Yeah. Um, because why wouldn't you? Why would you have a social life? <laughs> right. So this week was not all that scary. It was a little, we were, it was a little hard to find a movie that really thematically was prevalent but the one that i thought of what what jumped into my mind the most um was beetlejuice which i know is a stretch it's not really a horror film i mean it's 
it's got gothic it elements. It can be if but you're like a younger more person. Comedic. It's scary for the little kids, but I, I think remember being them. frightened by yeah, it. Yeah, when I watched it, it was creepy. The sandworm scared the crap out of yes. me. Yes, and the the circus head. Yeah. But so 1988, Tim Burton, uh, Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Catherine O'Hara, like all stars. Alec Baldwin, yeah, like, like, like a, at a his list prime, right there. Yeah. Um, and I recently went to. Did either of you go to the Tim Burton exhibit at Lackawanna? I didn't get to. No, before I, I missed left. it. You went, Jess? I thought it was phenomenal. Amazing. It I got to see. Uh, amazing. I got to see the book. From the, which was equally as amazing. Which was amazing. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. I was gonna buy it, but it was like a hundred dollars. Yeah. So wow. I didn't buy it, but nonetheless, <laughs> the exhibit was incredible. They had all this memorabilia, original production notes. Ugh. Um, Tim Burton literally scribbling on a piece of paper, like, "Oh, this is what I want Beetlejuice to look like," or "This is what I want this to be like." It was amazing. Awesome. Buy the book online. <laughs> but the reason what sticks out to me about Beetlejuice, um, and what what made me jump to it when I was watching last night was, you know, the whole theme of Beetlejuice is Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin are this couple who die. They don't die in their house. It's not as similar to this, but they die on this bridge in their town. Um, and they don't realize they're dead. They think that they just survived the car accident over the bridge and they go home. Um, they don't realize why no one can see them anymore. And eventually another family starts moving into their house. And there's this battle between the dead inhabitants and the living. Mm -hmm. um, and the dead inhabitants use Beetlejuice as a way to, to get these people out of their house. He's considered a, a bio exterminator. Is his yeah, name? I yeah. was looking that up. I thought that was funny. That's um, what he was called in yeah, the movie. That's bio what he, that's exterminator. What he calls himself a bio exterminator. Oh god. Um, and so their daughter, played by Nona Ryder, of the the living couple who move in, Catherine O'Hara, and the and the other man who I don't know his name. He wasn't very famous. Uh, he was Jeffrey in, Jones is his name. I think in I the eighties he yeah. was. He's like a comedian. Yeah. Um, and we, Winona Ryder is their sort of gothic daughter who moves in very much like Violet. She does not really get her her parents. She doesn't really fit in with them. And it's much more comic booky and much more over the top in Beetlejuice than it is in American Horror yes. Story. But just the same. She's this sort of displaced a lot of similarities, youth. right? And and she begins to be the window to the to the outside world. She begins to see them through Beetlejuice, and she sees that she is able to see the ghosts and communicate with them. Um, and she essentially is able to actually brokerage peace in this film. Mm -hmm. um, and then they all just sing Deo and float in the sky in the house, which is my fastest Favorite closing scene. scene in any movie. Deo! <laughs> um, say Deo. But I, I just they couldn't help but... I just couldn't help but draw on that. No, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of similarities between Winona Ryder's character and Tessa Farmiga's character in American Horror Story in the whole communicating with the dead. I mean, I think that the major... There was even a medium major, on last week's episode. Right. Yeah, the major difference, though, is that Winona Ryder's character is more interested and willing to want to communicate with them, and Violet on this show is a little bit frightened of them. Exactly. Exactly, but it's a great film. It's But still, like movie genius. Anything Tim Burton touches, I bleed for. It's a classic movie. It's really Tim Burton at his best. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Michael Keaton at his best. I don't think Michael Alec Keaton Baldwin at his best. Yeah, it's a great movie. So I can't imagine you haven't seen it, but if you haven't or want to watch it again, this weekend would be a great time. I'm due for uh, another view. <laughs> I, haven't I haven't seen it in well. years. Too. We should have a party. We should. All right, Popcorn let's jump into pajamas. news and gossip real fast. You won't cuddle. <laughs> After Buzz TV News. All right, so we got another Ryan Murphy and Entertainment Weekly exclusive. Does he just talk to Entertainment Weekly every, every week? week? Every week. Yeah. They run a column on this? Yeah. Show? Okay. So why hasn't Constance ever gone to jail for being the worst mother ever? <laughs> That's a nice question. Yeah. Ryan said, it's funny you should ask. Two episodes from now, we do a whole episode where Constance is called on the carpet for all of her crimes. All of them. And the question mm. is, how does she get out of it, or does she? Yeah. I don't think she does. That woman. Well, no, she has to because she got away with Moira's murder. She got away with killing her own child. I mean, so she, God knows what else. Oh, she's... sorry, she does get out of it. I agree. Yeah. I think she gets out of everything yeah. that she does. Completely. Sorry, yeah. She's such a charmer. So I love Marcy the realtor, who's Christine Estabrook from Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Ryan said, I'm obsessed with Marcy. I love her. I love her. Every episode, we're like, we're going to kill Marcy this episode. This is the episode. We get to writing her, and she's just too hilarious to kill. 
I think she's been a great source of levity, and she's a terrible person. She's a racist, a homophobe, the worst realtor in the world. She's that incompetent bumbler. I like to imitate her in the writing room. I would love to see Ryan Murphy like imitating this woman in the writing room. Right. His voice, if you've ever heard him like talk, he has this like the strangest, drollest voice. Yeah. Would, uh, was what was the name. racist comment that she made? Something about homosexual? Persians the, and stuff like well, that. Well, there was a lot this There's week. There's a lot of this she week. She said something about the previous homos, I mean homeowners. Right, 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 right. Was that was what it was. To, um, Eskandarian, and then she also said that there's plenty of minority men in this neighborhood who would love to throw me over the island and have their way with me. That explaining why she kept a gun. Yeah, on her. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, do you think she knows Larry? Marcy know. is Marcy dead? She... That's the thing. I wonder that's the how other much question. There is that Marcy knows. We've talked about this a lot. Is how in tune with what's going on here is Marcy, or is she just well, this idiot who has no idea? She said when they were on the uh, the murder tour, she said to Vivian, we'll conveniently leave that part out. So I feel like she does know some things. Well, I mean, she is the worst realtor ever. You need to disclose all that information. But also, I don't know. She, she might, might be, be very smart to like have done her research on the house. Yeah. She could just be an idiot. Yeah, it's very possible. We need to Google or YouTube Ryan Murphy doing Marcy impression. It would be amazing. <laughs> so Ben finds out Larry didn't kill his family. Why would Larry tell Ben that originally? Well, I think he's a very slimy character, first of all. What he says about the house is true, but also he's been trying to manipulate Ben into leaving so he can get the house back. The thing that's interesting is people who watch the episode will think, oh, he got burns by going into the bedroom to save his wife and kids. That's not accurate either. We have an upcoming episode where we will see how he really got them. I, I thought that. I just don't understand why he wants to get back into that house. Because he wants Constance back. I know, but clearly he's already, she's already told him that she wants nothing to do with him. And she's like, I've seen you lurking around. You've seen my new beau. Isn't he gorgeous? Men are relentless creatures. Well, well, do you guys they don't think take no for an answer. Burnt in the... Because he was really intrigued with the uh, fireplace Yes, downstairs. there's something with him in the fireplace. And there was also in the very first preview for this show ever... It showed a man walking into the fireplace. Oh, okay. So the then, the very first one. So there's something with him. Uh, something happened to him in that fireplace. He saw something in the fire. Yeah. Because <laughs> and and then Ben being drawn to the fireplace oh, too. Something right. happened in that fireplace. Um, that we're gonna see. But I I think maybe if he thinks that if he dies there he can come back not as deformed as he is now. Right. If and that's be also in his head. If his he original be, self. Be if it will like replenish him in some way. I think could be a driving factor for him too. Mm. We don't know the rules on that. On how we don't, and and Tate didn't look the different. Who die don't have the wounds on them when they die, from when they die. And so. Tate, except for Nora. Except for Moira, and Moira too. She has the eye. And the but, eye. But Tate and doesn't also, have like seven bullet holes in him. Right, so. but Tate also his face looked different when he was alive. He had like cut marks all over his yeah. face. So it, it, he looks normal though. Right that's now, what I'm saying. yeah, now, he except got for fixed his somehow he because he oh. had scars and he doesn't anymore. Maybe the doctor. <laughs> plastic, plastic surgeon him up to the ghosts. <laughs> so Entertainment Weekly loves the Infantata episode, and like Deidre, loves that his name is Thaddeus. Yes. But why is he bloodthirsty? Is that to keep him alive? Ryan answered, "Yes, I think with any sort of horror show, you get what is myth of what the well, excuse me. You, you get, get what, what is the myth, myth of that, that creature. creature. And the approach we took to that is it's sort of half Frankenstein, half Dracula." left by himself in the house, bloodthirsty. We've shown another episode where he's been eating possums and bugs to sustain himself. So he Very definitely nutritious. was still alive. Yeah, I, th I don't think he's And died. that was the possum that we saw in the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. So is that the noises that Vivian hears rumbling when she's just... And so maybe that's why he's so old looking? Yeah, he's aged from the 20s or whenever. Could be. To now. Terrifying. So we've seen three of Constance's children. Will we mm. see the fourth? Ryan said we've talked about that, and we've talked about who the fourth is. We of course know that. We of course know who it is, and yes, I think you probably will. But maybe that's a mystery I don't want solved. What mm. if Ben is Constance's <laughs> child? No, he would know that. That would be amazing. What? But wasn't Ben adopted? 
Didn't ha- there's isn't there? I'm not kidding you. That we watch. Where we didn't, there was something about his watch. Childhood. M- watch Constance be his biological <laughs> oh, that mother. Would be so weird and kind of maybe too much for me. I don't know. Was and Violet that- adopted? Oh no, because she's no. mentioned when I was pregnant with Violet. Um, there was something they did talk about Ben's childhood, and I don't know if he didn't know. I, I may be reaching because I want to for the sake of this. I argument. think you are. I don't remember. There's a reason why he wants to keep it a mystery. Yeah, if you're out there, if if you're out there and you remember the story of Ben's childhood, call in 424-256-1729, or else we'll clear it up for you guys next week. One more time, slower. 424-256-1729. I'm gonna stand by my claim. Info at AfterBuzzTV.com. I hate you. Info at AfterBuzzTV.com. It's so, it's Constance's baby. All right, fine. Okay. I don't believe you. She okay. put an afterbus stamp on it. Yes. Why does Tate hate his mother so much? Oh, you'll see. There's a whole episode that sort of resolves the Tate Larry Constance. How is she getting away with all this? Why did Tate do that at the school? All of that is in episode ten, I believe. So this was episode seven. Yep. Yeah, three I episodes. I cannot wait to see what right drove him to do something as horrific as shoot up the school. Yeah. She obviously did something to him. Someone did. Someone did. But or it, he's angry about something. I just feel like all his anger stems from her when they had that brief interaction. Yeah. And it seemed like, why hadn't she seen him in a while? She was like, I need to see my son. Because they but don't I get don't along. Think, I don't think that's the son she was going to see. The son she was going to see was Bo. And she Got just it. ran into Tate. No, okay. she was calling for Tate. She was yeah. walking through the hallway going, Tate, yep. Tate. Does anybody know that Bo lives there? Other than her. No. Well, uh, Violet saw him this week. Well, yeah, yeah, but I meant like Moira, because obviously if she was going there to see... I'm sure all the ghosts are aware of the other ghosts. I have a feeling they're all aware of each other. They would have to be, yeah. Poor Bo and his little purple because ball. Because when they all came walking back on Halloween... <laughs> it's totally red. Whatever. Ball. Yeah. I hate you. And at one point, we saw the red ball in the basement, which is confusing. Yeah, Addy was me. playing with. Was it right? With the red ball. Wasn't that the ball that the two boys, no, the, boys the twins, were throwing like those poppers, those things that you throw? Okay, because I say they made a weird noise. Yeah, no, but Addy was using the ball. Okay. Yeah. We saw her playing, and it rolled back after she left the basement. Interesting that Constance had a Down syndrome child, a normal child, and I don't even know what you would call Bo. Well, she did say when she, when she revealed that she had four, she said only one of them came out normal. Normal, but he was broken inside, and the three others were, she had a cursed wound. The three others yeah. had something wrong. Oh my god. Yeah. So creepy. Yeah. Well, next week is the rubber man revealed, right? Ryan said, yes, next week is great because it has several things that I'm proud of. I think it's an award-winning work award-winning work from Connie Britton because she has to play paranoia. We reveal 100% the identity of the rubber man. We also show people how the rubber man came to be. You see, where did the costume come from? Who is it? Why are they doing that? What is the rubber man's goal? It's also a great episode for Zach Quinto, who's amazing in it. Okay. okay. I Who is it? I think it's it's Zachary Quinto because they were um I know a while back I did say that I think it was the doctor in the suit mm-hmm. but because of the preview that we saw I think it is Zachary Quinto in in the suit and the man who did have sex with her because they were having problems with wanting to have a child and But do you think they would give it away like that in the preview? Because the preview, I think, was led to make you believe that it's think him. that it would be him but I don't know that, the, that Ryan Murphy would let them give that away and like I know, your mic blew. Teacher's mic is out. Check again, say something. Hello, hello. There you are. Yeah. You're back. Um, (coughs) So (laughs) I I don't think that they would give it away like that. No, it's very, you know, who the hell knows? Yeah. Um, I don't know that they would give it away like that. But, you know. We'll see. All right. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So they next... Okay, so, next ask, hello, so Rubber hello. Man's origins involve the gay couple, and Ryan replied, yes, in an interesting way, absolutely yes. Rubber Man is, I think, by far my favorite episode. I think it's very psychological, and I think one of the things about the house is that it's always conspired to help people or drive them crazy. In the next episode, it kind of does both. Suffice to say, there are several characters in the next episode who want a baby and will do anything to get it. Right. So, I mean, it does stand to make you want to believe that the Rubber Man is Zachary Quinto's character, who is Chad, Chad. I think. Yes. But but also, I don't know that they would give it away like that. In a, I, mean, in a yeah. I don't either. And I mean, maybe this is not like the best argument, but if he's gay, why would he have sex with? Because he, well, wants, a he wants a baby. 
That was the there whole are, thing. There are easier ways to have a baby. Not, Not when you're ghost. dead. <laughs> you, dead people can't go to an adoption agency? <laughs> they don't have, like, the dead adoption agency. So oh, right. They don't? Okay. I mean, then I guess maybe I'll stand behind my original prediction of... Uh, the doctor. Who, the doctor. Who keeps popping? Who keeps popping? I think it's what Jesse. If, what if it's it not you? Violet? It you? Are you in popping? The ro- popping what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's Violet? What if it's Violet? Someone penetrated her. It's not. It's a man. You know I like the obscure, I out know. of yeah, nowhere, know. abstract predictions. No, but le- honestly, That's who else could it? That's why yours don't make sense in mind. I think it could oh. be the doctor because he wants he he, he wants he to repair his relationship. He, needs, he yeah. wants to have to give Nora a baby because Nora, we saw her reaching for that stomach. I have I believe that too. That it's yeah. that, that original ghost couple. Yeah, who it would a kid. That one makes the most sense to me. I mean, Chad makes sense. And if they hadn't right. given it away in that, I would totally believe that it is Chad. Right, now. but we just don't think but they would. I, have I can't it already. They would. They would blow that shock. Right, and I thought we already knew that the origins of the rubber suit came from the gay couple. Because he bought it. He said he bought that as like a way to. Sp- and when we to saw that killed him, he was like, up. "Oh, you bought that." To s-? Yeah. So that was the first time it had been there, as, as we know. So we'll see. We'll see. That's an interesting way of spicing things up. Yeah. Hey. Did they not have massage oils and <laughs> other mechanisms like that? beyond that for a sex addict like Patrick. Apparently. Yeah. Alright, he's a sex addict. All right, last question. No, there's two more. All right, guys, have you shot the finale yet? He said, yes, we're shooting it as we speak. Do you feel good about it? <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of it. I think it's very satisfying and also deeply unsettling. It's both terrifyingly bleak and oddly uplifting. I think when people see it, it will be clear what the second season will be about. I hope so, anyway. Oh, interesting. That is so ambiguous. Very. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't want to give away anything too far in advance. I mean, we're only halfway through the first season as it is. Yeah, it's probably mine. (laughs) Something's wrong over there. All right, so let's jump into predictions. Okay. Thaddeus took over my microphone. Right? Predictions. When do I ever get to say it? Never. I always get to say it. I don't enjoy anything (laughs) about you. (laughs) All right. So as we saw at the very end of this episode, when Vivian and Violet were looking at the old photos, Vivian is now also aware that she, not that maybe she's met a ghost, but she something has happened to her. Mm -hmm. Because she sees this photo of Nora, and she instantly recognizes her as that woman who came to see the the house. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing we're left with in in this episode. I think she's definitely realizing that things are going on in this house that she didn't realize before. And clearly in the next episode, she is having sort of like a psychotic episode. breakdown. Right. Um, things ain't kosher. Yeah. I think and she's and as we that. saw that, that Ryan said that we're going to see her play through some paranoia. Right. Um, I think that's going to be really exciting to see because I mean it would you you would start to feel like you're losing your mind I was just gonna say I can't say I blame her right if that stuff was going on inside my house um you you want me to share with you no can you hear me okay yeah Yeah, yeah. um if that was going on in my house yeah I would question my sanity as well of course I totally wouldn't you want, <laughs> you you want baby Thaddeus lurking around your hallways? I have baby Thaddeus lurking around. <laughs> around <laughs> it would be kind of fun though to have you somebody like Tate running roommate. around my house just like Oh, this hot guy that I love just popping up in and out of nowhere. And killing people with axes for you. Yes, I think that's romantic. And demon babies. I, I loved, know. you know, Sydney DeBear and I are a sucker for a good alien demon fetus baby. I know. I, I, don't so. know. I would just leave. I wouldn't be excited about any of it. Do we think her paranoia is going to, like, push her off the edge to some extent? Or do you think she's going to get over it and, like, learn the truth? No, I think it's going to be something. It's definitely going to be something that's going to haunt her now. Until yeah. the, at least the season is over, it's going to be something that's on her mind. She's already seen one one ghost. Ghost. And if she so ever what she sees thinks. a picture of Zachary Quinto's mm-hmm. character, she'll be aware that she's seen two. Yeah, and interacted with three. Right, because we know that not only is Zach and Patrick, or excuse me, Teddy Sears who plays Patrick, they're both coming back next week. But as we learned in that that scoop, that there is this lesbian friend of his mm-hmm. who's coming to the picture, and I can see that woman being somebody who's alive who spills the beans to Vivian that this person shows him a, shows her a picture of Chad and then Vivian starts seeing more dead people realizing she's seen more and which furthers her into her her paranoia and her insanity next right. week 
Um, because I don't know why that woman would see her in past tense and for that to have been a big deal to announce in casting. Right. Also, we do see in this episode that the doctor told her that she should probably stay home, that every time she leaves yes. the house... Something, she, happens, something happens and she doesn't right. feel right. So I wonder if somebody's gotten to the doctor. <laughs> it's very possible. Or maybe the doctor's in on it. If Constance knows the doctor somehow. Because Constance really is the only one who could because no one else can leave. Right. But So if she is then told that she has to be bedridden for the duration of her pregnancy. Her paranoia would go even crazier because she yes. can't get away. Because she can't Here, get out. Here's a thought. Um... Do you think this baby is going to start some sort of a new storyline where we see what happens if you're born on the property? Oh, that's very interesting. Oh. As opposed to dying on the property. Oh, yeah. Because if she's so sick every time she leaves her house, what if she does one of those natural water births, like in her bathtub or whatever? Yeah. And the baby's no one, born I don't think on the anyone we've seen this had. A child a on child the property? On the property, or even well, while they're living there. They've all come to it with children and not been able to have children while they were there. I mean, I, I don't mm. I don't know anybody in real life who's had a child on their property. Most people go to the hospital. I do. You know somebody who's had a baby in their house? Mm -hmm, several. Like a midwife? Mm-hmm. All right. It's a growing trend, too. A lot of people think it's safer than going to the hospital. I think Katie Holmes had a natural birth for Surrey. Well, that's because it wasn't her kid. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but no, we I think it'd be. <laughs> I think it would be interesting to see what happens yeah, if you're definitely. brought into this world in the house. Well, and it also the larger question is just what is she bringing into the world? In exactly, this house? I think that is the, the um, bigger and, question. And if what I was thinking of when you were talking about how it could be possible that she has more than one thing, if they're twins but they're separate, what if one represents like pure evil, but her mm -hmm. child with Ben is like the savior of this house? <sighs> that was growing in the womb with the evil that could be like a totally probably Kate like there's like a 1.0 or 0. 0. 0.0 you know 0. 0. so 0. many things go on crazy percent. in this house to begin with that i wouldn't put it i think it wouldn't put it i wouldn't put it past the writers excuse me yeah to come up with something like that so it could be it's not that hard to sell a house like it is hard to sell a house that has a history like this. Whatever. There's desperate <laughs> people born every minute. They keep mentioning Not every in this economy. Every buyer keeps saying, I love this home. I'm getting four times the space for a quarter of the price. Right. There's right. A but sucker then born every find... minute. They could have gotten rid of the house. But then you get suffocated in the basement. Right. And then you die. <laughs> <laughs> but you died on the property, so you'd still be around. Well, and don't, don't you also think that like there's that crazy collectors out there who like are really into freaky stuff like that's the first thing that came in my mind well yeah Especially i mean we Hollywood. did see that in the house in the home invasion episode that there's people that are psychos and who want to live in a place like that i mean like, house is... why else would like charles Man manson's like house sell like oj simpson's like people are weird we right and that. like we saw when they were on the tour the realtor when they went past the apartments that nicole brown or the condo that she was killed in front of she said oh that gives me hope people will buy anything right so, yeah, I, I mean, I do think that they will find a legitimate buyer if they really want to leave, but I wonder if they'll ever really want to leave. Right. If and then to the point where they want to actually stay. Let's also, it get it, that would lead to the to the demise of, I think, this show if they ever left the house. Can we pool our money and make an offer? <laughs> sure. You know what I read, it actually? It exist. My friend found it and took a photo in front of it. I, what I read up. online is, is that... I don't know, I, have an I believe it's in Hancock Park. The Makes sense. original... Okay, sorry. The pilot was shot on location, but mm -hmm. then for the remaining episodes, on set. is set. They built an exact yeah. replica. Usually that's how which it Which is pretty incredible, because that well, it doesn't look outside. like a set. It looks like a home that they shoot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it's like on the Warner Brothers yeah. lot. or where, Do you know where they filmed this? I don't know which lot they filmed it. Maybe on the Fox lot, I would assume. Perhaps. It would make mo more sense so that they would build a replica of it than film on yeah, on yeah. location every week because yeah. you have to keep paying. But usually, most pilots film on location because we... they're not going to build a set for a pilot. Right. Okay. Well, Saturday, little trip over to Hancock Park. Never yes. hurt anyone. Let's take a I'm picture down. outside. We'll, we'll, take, we'll bring video evidence. Yeah, video cast photo. photo evidence. We'll we need to bring a flip cam to see if we see like little specters <laughs> flying. <laughs> right. in we have the to back. go at night though. We do. We do. All right. Well, we're going to end this here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, please email us if you have any thoughts and ideas about yes. what is going on. We love to hear from you guys. Yes. Please subscribe on iTunes. That yeah. really yes. excites us. And find us. us on Twitter. Real quick, you guys go ahead and give out your Twitter handle so we are fans. Uh, you can find me at you, the letter you. Can call me Skiff, S-K-I-F-F. -F. Most difficult Twitter handle of it's all time. It's so easy. You can call me Skiff. And then I'm at her name is Deidre, D-E-I-D-R-E. -E. And I'm at Billy Nellis underscore duh. 
And don't worry, because we are on top of getting the cast of American Horror Story in this studio. We so are. And we're trying as we speak. Next week, we will be going up on Wednesday night. On Wednesday, night. instead of Thanksgiving. So we'll see you the night this show airs. Okay. All right, guys. We'll okay. see you next week. Bye. Good night. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, Moira. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.